Rivers have always seemed like a perfect metaphor to life for me. Our time on this earth, like a short voyage on moving waters, leading to a destination unknown. Our only control, navigating between the banks along the way. With unexpected rapids and calm, slow-moving waters, that can lead to a river's fork we might not otherwise have explored. This is the Kenai River in central Alaska, a place where salmon runs and wild beauty draw people from far beyond these glacial waters, coming here to catch fish. Look at that. Leaving this place with so much more. We've come to the Kenai Peninsula to tell a story a story of love and loss that has inspired new journeys for those in search of what Alaska can be. We've come to the Kenai to capture its beauty in camera and share the magic of Alaska with friends and family here for their first time. From a hike into the woods not far from the river's edge, to discovering seaside towns with historic stops and personalities tough to forget. Did you guys see Dave or Zach? Not a hide nor hair. Adventure on the Kenai is easy to find. The trophy rainbows that follow the salmon upriver tend to be a little more challenging. All right, so Conley's on a, we, we think it's a rainbow. It's giving him a little bit of a fit. But one thing sure to happen when you come to Alaska is the way places like this change you inside. A realization occurs that you're now somewhere special a place still wild and filled with wonder. He's got a beast! You let him go? No, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. The turns in the river we're on today that led us here happened because another journey ended too soon. A strong connection Cameron Pius had to the Kenai now lives on in a lodge built to honor his memory. The cycles of life on an Alaskan river are tough and wonderful and constant, and now can be known by those who come here, who let it in, and then pass it on. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. Are you not entertained? We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing images of the most beautiful places on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's found in the frame. The people, the food, and the unexpected turns that happen on every journey. Want to go? No, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. Brings the full experience of travel into focus. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrick Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley since 1979, dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. Alaska has called to us again, but this time in a way we didn't expect. And because of that, the way we answered the call led to the kind of adventure here we'll never forget. The discovery to things new to us is perhaps the biggest reason why we travel. To see new places, new landscapes, and to look into the faces of new people all make the practice of travel something we love. 
But for me, equally as exciting is bringing loved ones back to a place they've yet to see. <laughs> Places only captured by our cameras or described to friends and family over dinner back home. So when this trip came together for Dave, Zach, and I, along with the opportunity to come to the Kenai Peninsula with family for their first Alaskan adventure, we knew this would be a special journey. After a long day of flying to Anchorage from Central California, grabbing a rental van that could hold nine and driving three hours to Soldotna, Alaska, we arrived at our lodge on the banks of the Kenai late and settled in for the night. I had recently become friends with Brent Pius, a home builder in Shaver Lake, California. As I got to know Brent better, he opened up about a tragedy in his life. The unexpected loss of his son, Cameron, who passed away from an unknown heart condition on Christmas Eve of 2015 at the age of 23. Cameron had developed a deep love for the Kenai on summer fishing trips here so, in 2020, the family bought this property along the Kenai, built a new cabin, and remodeled the one that was here, and opened Cam's Kenai Riverfront Lodges, so people like us could experience the Alaska Cameron was falling in love with. It became a way for his family to heal while honoring the memory of Cam in a way he would love. With an early Alaskan summer sunrise lighting up the river, we hit the water with cameras and fishing gear to start the day. I'm gonna go out a little further, Sorensen. I'm gonna load up here, double haul. All right, so we are here on a nice, crisp summer morning on the uh, Kenai River. And uh, did I just catch a fish? Nope, I caught a, I caught a rock. Um, anyway. What we're doing here is fishing for sockeye and silver salmon that are coming up the Kenai River. We are doing what's called flossing. So we're using a fly rod with a big weight on it. And basically all we do is just sort of flip the weight. About eight feet behind the weight is a hook with a piece of bright orange yarn on it. Um, they come in waves, really. And so we'll just keep, we'll just keep uh, rolling out, roll casting out into the salmon, out into the river. And we just let that big weight hit the bottom, and when it bounces across the bottom, you just bring it back across. And if the salmon are there, it's not uncommon to get a hookup almost on every cast. But right now, because we have the camera rolling, we're not gonna have that productivity <laughs> right now. For this run up to Alaska, we brought a fun group. My good friends and regular travel buddies, the Big Leones, my fishing pal, Jeff Sorensen, and my wife, Jill, who has never been to Alaska before. As the morning sun warmed the banks of the river, everyone hit the fishing platforms Brent put up to make access to the shore easier to navigate. Even though the Kenai is big, the fish typically migrate upstream right next to the bank, where the power of the current is easier to swim against. Okay, breakfast, biscuits and gravy. Oh, God dang it. Okay, they're a little further out, Sorensen. I'm getting bumps on them. Once we got the whole flossing technique down for these sockeyes, fish started stacking up on the bank and everyone began to ease into the beauty and magic of a summer day in Alaska. Oh, nice. Zach and Dave are busy grabbing detail footage of the property, but I wanted them to experience the fight these sockeyes can put up against light tackle and a fly rod. I got Boomer in the water first, and it didn't take long for him to hook his first salmon. You got one? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let the, let the line out. Let it go. Let it go. That was awesome. Good. Now start reeling them back. So drop the rod. Yeah, I can feel them coming yep. a little bit. Drop the rod tip and reel in as you drop and start uh, fighting back a little bit. Good, good, good. Now use the pole. Yep. You got it. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. You got it, dude. Boom. Dude. Oh my God. That's a pig, Dave. 
That's awesome. No, dude, that's a pig. That is a pig silver, dude. That's why you had <laughs> that is That is amazing. That is amazing. Zach, Dave, and I decided to sneak away from the lodge for a while to explore a nearby wildlife refuge, just a short drive from downtown Soldotna nearby. This is Zach's first time in Alaska as well. So I wanted him to experience the beautiful wooded areas that are a dream to hike through in this part of the state in summer. I've been wanting to come here for a long time actually, and this is really cool. Right. Yeah, and you're seeing a really good example of what temperate forests are like here in the Kenai. Yeah, I mean, green, very green, obviously, compared to where I'm from at this time of the year, but it's nice and cool, the weather's great, um, and it's just, it's clean, it's, the air's nice, color everywhere. Yeah. Access like this into these temperate forests is an easy way to capture the detail of the wooded areas of the Kenai Peninsula. Slowing down and immersing ourselves into this forest and enjoying the photography here is what brings a deep appreciation for places like this. On our second day, everyone is ready to venture out and explore more of the Kenai Peninsula. So it's into the van for a two hour drive south to the historic seaside town of Homer, Alaska. Along the way, there are lots of places to stretch your legs and take in some of the stunning scenery of central Alaska and capture moments of what everyday life here is like. By midday, our drive down Alaska Highway 1 brought us into the town of Homer, an historic fishing village and popular tourist stop best known for a sand spit that juts out into Kachemak Bay. Here, restaurants, souvenir shops, and places to come watch the fishermen bring in their salmon and halibut catches of the day give Homer its nautical charms. A walk along Homer's main drag is also excellent for people watching, and in my case, getting to meet an interesting person who now calls Homer home. I'm from New Hampshire. Originally. No yeah. I first came here in 84. This is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. So even when I was away from this most beautiful woman, you can't get her out of your mind, right? She's just imprinted in your mind. And this is the hole that this place put on me. Have you been to the dog? We just pulled up. The salty dog. You've been to the dog. We just got here. Oh. You gotta go to the salty dog. If you don't go to Salty Dog, you don't get your ticket punched, you can't leave the community. What part is this? The, we call this the spit. Where, where are we right now? It's actually called the it's spit. It's actually called the and spit. And in 1962, in an earthquake, 64. it was actually inundated with salt water, and, and, the, and it the took a long died. time for actually for grass to grow again. Okay, well, so, so and this is the main barrier between the Pacific Ocean and the, and the harbor? Is that right? Well, kind of. This is where Cook Inlet is going to hook up into the Gulf of Alaska. Oh, Cook Catch Inlet. Catch Bay, yeah, Cook yeah. Inlet opens up into the Gulf of Alaska. The I get it, I get it. No, I get it. it, it's a, it this is a great look. We just landed here, just got here today, just drove in. We got, we got, we're shooting around. In fact, Dave and Zach are somewhere. I haven't even seen. Did you guys see Dave or Zach? Not a hide nor hair. You don't even know Dave or Zach. No. Didn't even know him. Okay, all right. Well, I'm glad I met you guys because now I have a little bit better feeling on what to do, including going to the Salty Dog. So we're gonna head there next. The must-see stop on the spit in Homer is the Salty Dog. On the outside, it doesn't look like much, but slip past the doors and you're transported into another world. cave-like atmosphere with dollar bills stuck to every possible square inch of ceiling and walls. Paper stalactites covered with handwritten notes from all over the world. The cocktails were pretty good too. Back at the lodge for another shoreline fishing session as the long light of an Alaskan summer day slowly stretches shadows over the forest. Now, any time that you're camping or just hanging out in a lodge like this in the wild, 
food is always a big part of the fun. Cooking together in the decked out kitchens at Cam's Kenai Riverfront Lodges is a group effort. And lucky for us, we've got a couple expert chefs laying down gourmet cabin spread about every two hours. No one will starve on this trip. Mm. Can't stop singing. Uh -uh. Sorensen has been busy cleaning our catch almost nonstop. Zach tries his luck with fly rod in hand. The flossing technique has a pretty steep learning curve, but once you feel it, you figure it out quick. Okay, now, get him on his reel. Get him on the reel. Get him on the reel. Let's hold the line. Now you're fighting him. Oh my God. Hold that. Hold, hold him on the reel. Now the, let him go. Let him go. Let the reel. Let the line go. Okay. Watch it high. He's gonna go. <laughs> Jeez, dude. dude, he's got a beast. He's let him go. No, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. Oh, hold on. Hold on. You gotta pay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. Zach got into a nice fish that was full of spirit and started to make a pretty good run downriver. Okay, this is gonna take a while because you're into the freaking hog. No, he's a hog. He's a full-fledged hog. <laughs> Being a part of Zach and Dave's first salmon catch is something I'll always remember, and exactly why this lodge was built. He's gonna run. He's gonna run. Gotta let him go. Yeah. Cam's love for fishing and sharing moments like this with friends and family is preserved in a place where only these kinds of memories can be made. Pick, pick him up, pick him up. Got him. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh. Zachariah, oh. welcome to Salmon Town. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Wow. Stand up. Here we go. Oh One, two, three. <laughs> boom, okay, boom, Zach. throw him in. Okay, hang on, no, 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 no. Look at me. Yeah, get it all. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. Five. Oh, oh yeah. One, two, five. Good job, Zach. I've heard stories before about giant rainbow trout that could be caught on the Kenai as they follow the spawning salmon runs upriver, feeding on eggs laid by the salmon that are washed out of their gravel beds. Britt Pius suggested we hook up with one of the best guides on the river to get us on these mythical trout while also having the chance to explore the upper reaches of the Kenai by boat. Bones the dog is digging the ride right now. Longtime Kenai River guide Ian McDonald and his trusty dog Bones welcomed Zach, Jeff, Conley, and I aboard as we began an 11 mile run upriver in search of a monster catch. So we're on the middle Kenai right now, putting in at Bing's Landing. Um, this is the most accessible roadside stream, most fished accessible roadside stream in Alaska with um, over millions of fish that come in here every year. It's super important because majority of Alaska harvests their fish out of this river. Um, it's really, really special because it has huge numbers of sockeye that come in. This year being unique, it has over two million fish that have entered the river to spawn. We all liked Ian right off the bat. His laid back style and knowledge of the Kenai ecosystem drew us into the adventure. And skimming up river on these turquoise waters gave us a new appreciation for the river. There, she's my, she's my star. And I gave her a bath today too. <laughs> The plan was for Ian to take us to the headwaters of the Middle Kenai, where it begins at Skelac Lake. The run upriver, even if we weren't fishing, would be worth it. In fact, for just a photo safari, booking with Ian would put you into the kind of terrain and landscapes you can only access by boat. At the point where the river and lake merge, Ian cuts the motor to set up what we're doing next. So there's two lake systems to the Kenai, two that are connected to the Kenai, which is uh, Skelac Lake and Kenai Lake. Skelac being the larger of the two. I'm pretty sure it gets over a thousand feet deep. And um, yeah, I mean, this is where this is where I live. This is home for me. You guys, just listen. All you hear is fish jumping and loons. Fish jumping and loons. <laughs> I mean, this is, no, I'm serious, you guys. 
this is like as good as it gets right here. And there's fish jumping all around us. Just did we did we get in some sort of a boating accident down river? And this is actually the first days of heaven. <laughs> like, are we living? In that? Did we like not know that we got in some sort of tragic, weird ferry accident of some kind? This is really cool. All right. So, Ian, um, what is the first thing we're gonna do? So, um, are we gonna fish right here? We're gonna fish. Yeah, we're gonna fish right here. I'll have to have the engine on for it. Um, yep. There's, there's yeah. fish just right there. So we're gonna fish for sockeye salmon. Um, some of them are a little bit red. They're getting a little closer to their spawning, but um, there's some fresh ones around and we're gonna troll some little plugs and see if we can get a few of them to bite. All right. We have it to ourselves. There's nobody up here. Yeah. Do, awesome. your, do your thing, man. This is All awesome. Right. When the sockeye are in the river or the ocean, they typically feed on phytoplankton and krill as filter feeders. This means they won't hit large spinners or lures downstream. But here, for some reason, they will hit a certain kind of lure that Ian is trolling, and it doesn't take long to get into the action. Well, what you're seeing right here, folks, is what we call in the fishing world a double, meaning uh, Ian put us in a really good spot, and uh, we've got two hookups. So Jeff and Conley are both hooked up on sockeyes, and the trick now is to keep them from getting tangled from each other. Conley looks like oh. he's gonna, oh, he lost it right at the I'll, end. I'll try to All right. It for you. That's all right. <laughs> yep. Look at that. That's 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 fine netting ability there by Ian. We didn't see any of that back at the camp. No. <laughs> the beauty of this remote part of the Kenai has transported us to a completely different mindset. Ian finds a secluded stretch of gravel on Skelac Lake to make a fresh salmon shore lunch for us. Taking the time to have experiences like this always pays off years down the road. That's how we do it right there. That's how Ian does it. <laughs> I can't believe Zach's still shooting right now. He's normally got the, he'll have a fork in his hand before everybody else. <laughs> sharing this quiet, scenic section of shore for a lakeside lunch with perfect weather and with good friends is something none of us will forget. Now headed back down river, Ian is changing tactics to try and fool one of the monster rainbow trout that are in this river. The bobber is gonna be tapping quite aggressively in some areas. It's only like a foot deep or two feet deep. In other areas, it's seven feet deep. So you're gonna see it be pretty mellow and then you're gonna see it hit pretty hard. The action in this part of the river was fast and furious, but mostly the guys were catching Dolly Vardens, a smaller trout-like fish that puts up a good fight, but nothing like a 30 pound rainbow we're hoping for. Any day on the water is a good day and with an unforgettable experience under our belts on the middle Kenai and new friends made in Ian McDonald and Bones, it's time to head back to the lodge as the day winds down. Cam's Kenai Riverfront Lodges was a place easy to feel at home in. The layout in the matching cabins is warm and inviting with comfy beds and great views of the river. The fishing platforms are just steps from the back porch of the cabins, and as the sun begins to set late, there's time to find a few more sockeye to fight. Spending time together like this with the people you love is exactly why the Pius family built this cabin after Cam's passing. This is the life Cam was already living and the way he would have wanted this place to be. On our last morning, Brent had told me to be sure to visit the memory post on the pavilion. Here, before guests leave the lodge, they come down and place a hook or lure into the post and hold one memory from their stay. It's also a time for us to think of Cam and say thank you. We didn't know Cameron Pius or even have the chance to meet him, but the legacy he's left behind in the spirit of this place where families can come and share in the beauty of Alaska together 
is something we'll always be grateful for. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrick Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advance Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley since 1979. Dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more.